Hello and welcome back to my corner of the internet. My name's Rob and a few days ago I posted this basketball to my hashtag CAD model of the day challenge and I told you that I did not use the sweep feature. This is pretty significant because the black part of this basketball has the sweep features name written all over it. That is, it's a constant cross section, a rectangle, over a weird path. So one would assume in order to model it, you would have to set up a sweep. But that's actually not the most effective way to model this. You see, the problem with sweep is that, number one, that path is very hard to draw on the surface of a ball. And number two, even if you could, the sweep will actually twist the profile as it tried to sweep along the path and would keep the walls of the sides of the path uneven pretty much. And that's not what we want. So what is an easy and effective way to model this basketball? When I posted this to my Instagram, Twitter, and my YouTube community page, I asked for guesses. And this person guessed, did you use the wrap feature? And that's actually a really good guess because the wrap feature is designed to project these weird curves onto any kind of surface. But I didn't use that either. And there are a couple reasons for this. One of them is it's pretty hard to know how exactly to draw the spline in order to get that effective path. And number two, since you can't map a flat object to a weird surface perfectly, it actually uses a numerical algorithm. So then you start to introduce a little bit of inaccuracy. And that's just the way it works. So if I didn't use a sweep and I didn't use the wrap, what did I use? Well, I'll show you right now. So here I'm in SOLIDWORKS 2020. Go ahead and open up a new part for us. All right, and first let's go model a ball. So sketch on the front plane and there are a couple of ways to model a ball but I'll do this way I'll start with the center line like this and to get an arc remember you just move your mouse it's purely mouse movement back to this end point and then move your mouse away and then it turns into an arc I'll grab that center and snap that to the origin and then give this a radius so I think a diameter of a basketball is nine and a half inches over two to get the radius 4.75 and I will revolve that 360 there we go now we got a ball basketballs are hollow so I can take care of that with the shell command and I'm actually not sure of the wall thickness of a basketball but I'm just gonna guess it's an, an eighth of an inch you know whatever is fine it's not about the numbers it's about the method that I'm showing you here so the sketches I might draw might not be exactly what a basketball is but it, like I said general method and now we have to take care of the black part, the weird path that we were talking about before. So this is a really good example of applying lateral thinking, in this case, literally. So you may have seen clip art of basketballs and they look kind of like this. And if you look, that profile is something that we can sketch very easily in a 2D sketch. So let's start with that. So I'll open up another sketch on the front plane. And I'm going to separate these out. I won't draw it all in one sketch, but um, I've got a line. Didn't want a rectangle. I need a line. And it actually needs to be larger than the basketball itself. I'm going to center it up, but if I wanted to be really rigorous about it, I can put a value above nine and a half just to make sure it stays larger than the sphere itself. But we'll just leave it like that will extrude this and if you throw a single line into the extrude command it'll force it to be a thin feature and that's exactly what we want here and for the thin feature of thickness I'll put let's see maybe a quarter of an inch so 0.25 like that and I'll center it up mid plane and we want to extrude this until it goes all the way through so through all direction two, through all just like that and oh yeah, important, we need to uncheck merge result. We're gonna be doing a little bit of multi-body modeling here. Okay, so we should have this block that is intersecting our sphere. Let me let Stella out. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's draw the curvy bit. So another sketch on the front plane and I'll draw the profile kind of like this. I'll put a line at this angle I'm going to get another arc by, remember, moving your mouse, touching that end. And if you move out, you get a tangent arc. So something like this. 
So snapping to the two tangents, I'll put this horizontal to the origin. I'll put the, these two endpoints of the arc to be vertical. That'll make it pretty much symmetric. Okay, it's doing a weird dance. Um, let's snap this midpoint onto the silhouette edge of the ball. Like that. You can give this like a radius or something. And maybe this an angle. Okay, so again, values don't matter in this case. You can uh, tweak it a little bit if you need to, but if you want yours to look exactly like mine, I put four inches on that arc with 75 degrees between the two lines. Center point of that arc snapped to the silhouette edge of the ball. And that's all we need. And again, another thin extrude. So mid-plane, through all, and direction two, through all. Merge result unchecked. So if you look up here, you should have a solid bodies folder that now says three, one for the ball, and one for the two entities. And now we can do a bit of patterning to get the two other bodies. So first we can do a mirror, for example. Our mirror plane is gonna be about the right plane. Switch it to bodies to mirror, and then click this little curved bit. Hit okay. You don't have to worry about merging because uh, mirroring doesn't merge separate bodies unless it's connected to itself yeah and then we can copy another one of these bodies so i could use a circular pattern but i don't have an axis right now but i can say if i look search for my move copy bodies command i can move this body rotate it about the origin and then uh, remember right hand rule so the z is pointing out like that so i need to turn it 90 degrees along the Z. Make sure this is set to copy so we get an, ex well, an extra copy. And now we have something like that. Yeah, this, uh, this part looks a little bit smaller than this, so I might reduce the size of this, maybe 3.75. Oops, I turned numlock off. Okay, that's a bit better. So yeah, you can play around with it, but yeah, now you can see, if you look at where these bodies and the ball intersect, it's making this path of the basketball. But now the question is, how do I translate something that practically doesn't exist yet and combine all of these together in order to get our result? So we'll, we'll do that right now. But first, I want to combine all the thin bodies here. So I'll just search for my combine command, set it to add, and pick these handful of bodies. So now we should only have two bodies. One is the ball and the other is this combine. And now to put it all together, I will use the intersect command. So that's features intersect right here. And now what intersect does, as the name implies, you can throw surface bodies, solid bodies or planes in order to kind of combine them together. It's kind of like the combine command but it does all three operations at once. It can add, it can subtract, and it can find the common volume between bodies. It's pretty amazing. So we really want the intersecting regions, but if you're not sure of what to pick here, you can just say create both and just sort through the bodies. So I'll click the intersect, and now it's gonna run the computation. All right, so now it picked a whole bunch of regions here. So if I start clicking on bodies, it will choose those to exclude. And in this case, it might have been just that, but I think there's bodies on the inside of this. Let me check. Yeah, there's bodies on the inside. So let me put that let me put that one back. So what we can do is if you notice we have an invert selection so we can actually pick the bodies that we want to keep and then hit invert selection and basically get our final result. But first we need to get this out of the way. So I'm going to click that and memorize which one it picks. So that is region eight. And then at this point, I'll just pick the regions that we want to keep like that. And remember this thing region eight, we have to exclude because we want to get rid of that. So this, these are all the bodies we want to get rid of. So 
So put region eight back and then hit invert selection. And that leaves us with our basketball. And if I hit merge result, it'll turn it back into a sphere. So it's almost like back to square one. So make sure you uncheck merge result, hit okay. And that should be our result there. It's looking, looking swell. And let me section this just to make sure that there's nothing in there. Okay, great, nine bodies, because we have the eight regions and then the, I'm just gonna call it the net, even though that's kind of confusing considering the game, but whatever, we got this little net pattern that it's its own body. So I'll turn that off. And to get like the little indent, it's basically like a sphere that is slightly less than nine and a half inches in diameter. So what I'll do to accomplish that I'll go to my search and I'll search for the move face command. So if I set this to offset, and for example, if I click the, the face of this net and then put this to a large value, maybe not that large. So you can see it's expanding all those faces in that direction. So this is kind of what we want, but instead of expanding, we want to contract it a little bit. So I'll set that to be a lot thinner. So let's do it like a 16th of an inch. So you can see it's offsetting like that. Flip direction. And now you can see it's indenting pretty much. Hit OK. Looking pretty good. And our last step is to combine everything back into one solid body. Holding shift and clicking, we'll select all those items. And there you go, that's the basketball. And actually as an added bonus, I'll add the appearances that I put there so you can see how I did the dimple effect. So I only right click the top item here, go to appearances and do that. And just make it an orange of some kind. There we go. And I can apply the black face to this face. There you go. And if you want, you can leave it like that. But I'm going to do something a little bit different and um, go I'm going to go into my display manager and go to find the orange color hit edit appearance. Uh, go to advanced, go to surface finish. And under surface finish, there should be dimples. Yep, dimple and dimpled size, it's probably way too large right now. Or right, let me go to mapping. Let's see if that wants to work. I might have to select faces. Oh, I have to turn real view on. Yeah, let me do that first. My mistake, real view. Yeah, and we'll take out the shininess too. Edit appearance, surface finish, dimples. There we go. Make the dimples a lot smaller and change the mapping. So we'll fix the aspect ratio. And just kind of playing around with the dimple size. Yeah, those might be a little too fine, but you can play around with it. But to get rid of the shininess, I'll go to illumination. I'll turn this down to like 50 thousandths there, maybe even less and I'll turn on blurry reflections because most most materials have at least a little bit of reflection so I don't want to set it to zero or it's going to look like a pastel pretty much so I hit okay to that and I'll do the same treatment to the black at least for the reflection turn it way down turn on blurry and there you go. There is the basketball modeled in SOLIDWORKS without using the sweep command or using the wrap command. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave it a like. If you want to see more models like this, please subscribe and follow me on my Instagram and Twitter where I'm posting a model every single day. So you're going to see content and feel free to ask questions. Who knows? It might become a video. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Come on, Stella. Hey. Doing well out here? Oh, of course you are. <laughs>